Hello. Today I'm gonna to show you the coolest new feature that uh, our example game has. It's uh, saving a high score on an NFT. And I will show you the Rust program and the C sharp part. First of all, let's try it out. So I select an NFT. I start jumping with it until I have a high score. So in this case, it's like five points. And now I can click this little button here, save on high score. And, and you can see some locks here. So it takes my account, it sends the transaction to the smart contract I wrote, and then the transaction is finalized. And now we have six points. And the points are also influencing your experience. So the more NFTs you have and the more often you save the high score, the higher your experience will be. And later I will probably also add some game to it, like uh, for example, unlock skills with a higher level and so on. So I think the easiest way to understand it is uh, if you step through the code. So I'm gonna save the high score. And now we are in our create and send Einstein save high score transaction function. So first of all, we um, get the wallet, uh, the RPC from the wallet. Then we check if the program is deployed. So um, I have the hard-coded high score program public key in here, and I get the account info from it. And if the account info is not null, then we can check if um, the program is executable. So this is true. So we know now that the account exists and that it's executable. So it means it's a it's a program that is deployed on mainnet or on whatever net you put in. Then um, we get the public key from the wallet. Then we get the public key from the mint of the NFT, which will be used as a seed for the program derived address. So then we create, uh, we try to find a program address. Um, it's a PDA, which means that only at the program that the program is the owner of the of the account and uh, it just uses the seeds to change it so in this case we put in the score seed which is just the string score and then we put in the bytes of the public key of the mint of the nft and like this um, every client so every game client can check the same seeds and get the same high score for the same NFT. And this function will now return us a new public key. And this will be the public key for the account that is linked to the NFT. And it gives us also a little bump, which just means that um, you need a bump to make sure that the key that this function is generating doesn't have a private key, so that's uh, on the cryptographic curve. So the bump will just bump it off the curve, and then you can be sure that it doesn't have a private key. And so it's not a Solana account, but it's instead uh, a program account, like uh, also what the function already says, try to uh, find a program address. So next thing we're going to do is we put the fee payer, which is our local wallet, then we put a, put a recent block hash, um, which we need for the transaction. Then we put empty signatures because the signatures of the phantom wallet will end. Then we start creating the instructions and then we put all the accounts that we need for this program. And uh, all the accounts that will be read from or changed will need to be in this account list. Otherwise, you will get a signature verification failures or some er other errors. So what we put in is the program derived account. That is the program address that we found up here. Then we put our local public key, which will be the signer. So it will pay for the account and also for a little fee. Then we have the high score submit fee public key. So whenever you um, save a high score, um, it costs also a little bit of a fee that will um, that you can send to yourself if you make a game. So it's to show how you can make a pay-to-play game, actually. Then we need to put in the system program because the system program will be invoked from our Rust code and will create the accounts. And then we need the NFT mint public key because we use it as a seed. Then the next thing we're going to do is we uh, put some custom data. So 
The first value is the instruction data because we will have uh, the fun uh, the program I wrote has three different functions. It has um, it's basically the hello world example, but I uh, in improved it a bit or ex extended it a bit. So if I would put zero, it would increase the score by one. If I would put one, it would decrease the value by one. And if I put two, it will set the value to the value that we pass in. Then the next um, few four bytes will be the high score. It's an unsigned integer, so a U32. Then we put the bump because the program also needs it to create the program account. And then we have here a, a bool. I don't know how to send the bool to Rust, so I just send the unsigned uh, a U8 with one or zero. And yeah, so now we have the data. Then we create the instruction. So we put our program public key. Then we put all the accounts and then the data. Then we add it to our increase uh, level transaction. Then we lock something and then we sign the transaction. So in case of mobile, it would open the phantom wallet and you need to approve it and then it's sent back. And then we use our RPC to send the transaction. So we just convert it to a base 64 string and then we send it off. And we can either wait for it to be finalized or if we want to be faster, we can just put confirmed, which is not 100% sure that it will go through, but it's way faster. So basically you send it and like a second later or so it's already confirmed. And usually if Solana works well, it's good enough. Then we check if the transaction was successful. Um, we check the transaction. So in our case here in the game, it will just show these blimps on the screen, like zero from 31 transactions and then two, three, four, five, and so on. Or if it's confirmed, it will go very quickly and just say confirmed on the screen. And then you know that the high score was changed. So now we're gonna look at the Rust code. Um, it's the same code as last time for the Hello World example, just with a few changes. So the first thing I did is I unpacked the instruction data into these instructions here. Um, so match is basically a switch case. And when it's zero, it calls increment. When it's one, it calls decrement, so decreases the high score. And when it's two, it um, gets the data from the high from the day it gets the high score u32 from the data that i passed in and then calls the set instruction with uh, u32 from le bytes i don't know why it's le bytes maybe it's francisish um but anyway after this is done um we have here the instruction and then the next thing we do is we iterate through all the accounts. So I don't know why it's an iterator and not an array, but uh, probably for performance reasons. But uh, so we get the five accounts that we passed in earlier. So we pass in the account, we get out the account, then the payer, the payee, which will be getting the fee. The payer will be the fee payer, so our local wallet. Then the system program, just so that we can interact with the system program, program, and then the NFT mint, which we will use for the seed. So basically, we do exactly the same code as in the client. So we create the seed from the score, the NFT mint key bytes, and the bump. And then we create the high score PDA. So we create the program address with the NFT seed and the program ID. So it's also exactly the same like we, what we did in C Sharp. Then we have a little message here. So just so that I know that the key that was created in Rust is the same that it was created in C Sharp. Then we get the instruction data number six, which was this bool that I created. So either it's one or it's zero. And if it's one, then the program knows that it needs to create the account for the program first. So we do a cross invocation of the system program. So system instruction, uh, invoke, signed, create account. We put in the payer, we put in the new account key. So the new address that the, where the program will be the owner. We put the 
the cost for the account. Actually, it's uh, 91, but I just put a little bit more in case, just in case. <laughs> then the size of the account is still four, like in the Hello World, the account is just one U32. So, um, yeah, it's four. <laughs> Then we put the program ID, the payer and the account and the seeds. Then afterwards we check if the account uh, owner is the program ID. It's just some security reasons. I think I found it some, I think it was in the hello world example already. Then we invoke a system program transfer to pay for a fee. So it will be 0.001 SOL and we put the payer and the payee. And then we get the greeting account. It's still called greeting account. Actually, it's now the high score account. But um, anyway, so we get the greeting account from the account data. Then we can match the uh, instruction here. This is uh, what I showed you earlier. It says 0, 1 or 2. And when it's increment, we increase. If it's decrement, we decrease. And if it's set and the counter the high score is smaller than the new high score, then we set it. It's maybe not 100% good because in case the high score is smaller, um, the program doesn't fail. But for me, it's very convenient if I just in the Unity editor can just whenever I want increase the high score. But maybe if uh, for production, you may want to change that because in case there's an error in the client or something goes wrong, it could be that people pay a fee, but their high score is actually not changed. Um, yeah, then we save the greeting account again. So we serialize and yeah, we basically copy the account data. I don't know why it's like has this mute mute here, but it works. And maybe if you need more information that I can also research this a bit more and then we just have a message um, high score changed to and then the value in the account and that's already it um, yeah let me know if you need uh, if you want more tutorials like this if this is helpful for you and uh, otherwise uh, have a nice day or a nice week hey so for some sadistic reason I decided I want to figure out what this uh, mute mute means and so I started looking into it and um, the first thing is the borrow mood. So I was um, looking it up, what it actually returns and what it does, it just uh, returns a mutable of, uh, of the array that we put in. So in our case, it would be a mute u8. And then this uh, two dots here just means a range full. So basically it returns the whole array. And um, you can see that the square brackets with two dots is just star container of the index mood of the index. So basically what it means, it's exactly the same as writing star from index mute with the um, index mute curly uh, normal brackets and two dots. And this returns a, um, a ref mute of a mutable u8 array and this makes it into an u8 and uh, then we put uh, end mute and mute in front of it because serialize wants a mutable writable and uh, a mutable u8 would be writable <laughs> and so mute mute um, is what serial serialize wants but then I looked more into it and was wondering why we do this because um, index mute and the star already turns a mutable u8. So if I just remove the star here, I can also just write end mute uh, of this index mute with the normal brackets. Uh, so this also works. And then I was thinking, why do we even need to return this? uh this index mute why can we not just directly take the borrow mute because it already returns what we want like a mutable u8 and then we just need to write one mutable u8 in front so if i build this 
uh, actually all four of these things work except the first one doesn't ah no the problem is i can't uh i can't print it because then i would borrow it and i can't borrow them more than once so i didn't i didn't save but now um yeah all of these writings are actually the same and I kind of think the last one is the nicest. If anyone knows if it has uh, some implications to just write it like this, it would be nice. Maybe it's not doing a copy of it, and usually it would. Anyway, it's less writing, so the program will be a bit smaller, so we save a few Lamparts maybe. <laughs> Oh yeah, and as usual, the game, uh, the source code is, of your, is open source, and I put the link in the description, and you can play the game on soulplay.de, so you can try it out, you can save some high scores, um, you can use your phantom wallet to connect, you can pick your NFTs, and you can start playing and saving your high scores, and would be happy if someone builds their own game. Let me know about it.